I changed the uh, the camera setup a bit. Um, I got tired of being like washed out by the background behind me. So now I look like a normal person sitting in a normal space. What's up, everybody? I've uh, we're gonna talk about panels today. <laughs> so we'll just hop right into it. We got a couple of people in the room. Been chatting with you guys. It's good to see you here on a Saturday. I'm trying to see what kind of um, crowd is available on a Saturday. I tend to think that people aren't on social media as much on Saturdays, but uh, we'll see. You know, it's always good to have some Saturday content, right? Brother Joe, what's happening? Silver Stacks Prepper. That's a good name. I like that. That's pretty slick. <laughs> hey, Melissa. And then there's Ulysses, brother T. Washington was out around here somewhere. Um, Gemini Love, hello. Gary, what's happening? I think I saw Allison around here too. Hi, Allison. Nice. You guys may not get all the birds and stuff, but uh, I didn't like the way it sounded. I wasn't a fan of that. I was using a blue microphone, so I wasn't a fan. Sunday Backyard Farmer, what's happening? Hey, Janice, Alpha, South Padre. You asked a question. Is that Padre? Padre, yeah. You asked a question last live, and I didn't get a chance to answer it. It was a good one. Love the cuddle. What's happening? <laughs> Present. <laughs> in, in school, I would say whatever everyone else didn't say or what the teacher told me not to say. Like, say present. I would say here. I'm a thug. What can I say? <laughs> hey, that's what's up. The birds are birds are popping. If the blue snowball pulls in everything. It's a I think they call it an omnidirectional microphone versus a straight on microphone. Wayne, what's happening? Good to see you, man. Thanks for coming over. I'm a rebel, man. I've always been a rebel. I don't backpedal either. <laughs> oh, man. All right. So let's talk about these panels. Um, so the first things first, I want to start by saying I don't have any power stations that accept the higher voltage. All of my power stations basically max out at about 30 volts. Um, that kind of sits in the 12 volt range when you get above don't quote me on this when you get above 30 volts or something then you start to get into the what is it 12 24 volt range i know it's weird but you know i didn't make the rules right um 20 vo 24 volt panels typically run at about 30 some odd volts or 37 38 and maybe they settle down to about something in the 20s i don't know but 12 volt panels most of the panels that most people own like your energies your hqsts your rich solars uh i imagine those thunder storm thunderbird what are those uh <laughs> those harbor freight panels called thunderbolt they typically are rated at about 21 volts as the open circuit uh, don't quote me on that either but it's the higher one basically the 24 volts the the 21 volts is the maximum you can kind of expect when that panel is just getting sun on it and probably when it's in a closed circuit which means both of the male and female are plugged into each other um, but then once there's a load on it it kind of settles down a little lower um and honestly, I think it settles down a lot lower once it has an actual load on it. So a 21 open circuit voltage panel, they rate it at about realistically 18 volts. And then when it starts to give power to the battery, it may go down to about 17 or 16 volts. That's been my experience. Will Prowse actually mentioned that in a video recently, which was great because I had been wondering if that was the case all along and calculating my power going into my power stations before I had these fancy ones that told me to watch. <laughs> I 
I need to do a video on my flashlight collection. I don't know if it has an audience on this channel. We'll see. Um, I think once I have a nice following, then I can start to deviate. But typically, how you grow on YouTube is to make content for the people who subscribe for that content. When you start deviating and stuff like that, and then it, people stop watching, and then YouTube is like, oh, that person's not interested anymore, so we're not going to show them the next few videos. So I'm trying to be very strategic and stick to solar. This whole this channel was meant to be a a tech channel, but fueled by solar, but that was too broad. So none of my power stations can take 24 volts um, panels. So all of my panels are 12 volt panels. I own two HQST panels, one mono, one poly. I own two Renogy mono crystalline panels and I own a 50 watt Renogy panel, which was my first one. And I own a 200 watt 12 volt rich solar panel, which is what I use on the EB70. Um, the mono and the poly, they're typically the same. They have a slight variation in their voltage in their amp, but the volts times the amps gives you the watts. That's how they arrive at calling something a 100 watt panel. So if you think about it like uh, 20 volts times five amps is 100 watts. So. Why don't I have any foldable panels other than the price? <clears throat> the price is the main reason. <laughs> I actually, I do have a, I have a personal folding panel, an Anchor 15 watt, which is my first solar panel. I kind of leave that out of the fray um, when talking about solar, but that's the first thing that got me into solar. I used to use an old iBook G4 that doesn't work. Uh, just to tell you how my brain works, because the screen mechanism allows me to angle it at the sun. I thought that was ingenious. Nobody was impressed, though, but, you know, peasants. What can I say? <laughs> I'm talking about my friends list on Facebook. But I had to figure out a way to angle that thing towards the sun to get the maximum amount of power to charge my power bricks. Um, I don't know, man. I, I just it's the money for me. And also, I don't need portability. Um, I don't go to the forest or even with my family, if we go to a park or something, I would just bring a 50 watt panel with me if I absolutely needed power. I'm, I don't know. I don't know. I don't even know that I like the idea. It's like the wind blows. There's no permanence to it. Knocks it over and then I'm not getting power anymore. I'm just uh, I don't I don't find that it suits my lifestyle. This brightness is killing me. I got to tilt it here. Thunderbolt, thank you. <laughs> Ban everything. What's going on, brother? Don't be in here cussing people out, man. It's <laughs> a little inside thing we got going on. <laughs> what is the true difference between mono and poly? That's a good question. Um, my understanding is that monocrystalline panels, the silicone in them is one single piece polycrystalline panels. I could be saying that wrong is many pieces broken up together and made into the silicone. So people have told me when I was on my whole, I don't know if this is a poly panel or a mono panel. They say, if you look very closely at a poly panel, you can see the little crystal flakes. What I have noticed between my HQST panels is my mono panel has like the little diamond segments into it. And I'm looking down at my rich solar panel. It does not. And it's supposed to be a mono panel. I was just thinking about this like the last day or so. Like I'm kind of find myself in the same dilemma. But it had I don't know if it has anything to do with that little diamond. But I noticed the difference between my mono and my poly HQST panel. And all my Renogy panels have that little diamond in the middle. And then there's the debate about which one is more efficient. People say that monocrystalline panels are more efficient throughout the totality of the day. So I think they may do a little bit better in low light than poly panels. But it's like at the end of the day, they all produce what they produce. And I find it very comparable. It's my brightness up here. It's my brightness up here. It is. Um, don't be obnoxious. And I'm sure you guys won't. But as the live streams grow, 
then people will come in and start to be obnoxious. But if I miss your question and you want to answer, just paste it again. I, I do a pretty decent job with this crowd of being able to catch everybody's questions. But when I watch the live back, I notice that I missed some. And I'm like, man, I would have liked to answer that question. And if I do not get to it, post it in the comments so I can see it and, you know, reply to you. Oh, that's a good example. It says Polly is like OSB plywood. You are correct, my brother. It is a bunch of flakes stacked. And yeah, and for the longest time, Polly used to be cheaper because the manufacturing process was different or more affordable. Mono used to be more expensive, but they're kind of starting to match. So if you can get a mono panel, get a mono panel. If you can get a poly panel and it's cheaper, get a cheaper poly panel. What do we got here? Oh, really? <laughs> That's interesting. Uh, what's her name? She, her and her husband have that one. I asked her to let me know how she feels about the, I don't, I don't know how to pronounce it, but it's Wayne's comment. He said he got the, oops. Oops, 600 Lifepo for, what does that say? 329 man i am so compelled by that uh price i really am like life pull for 300 dollars with double the capacity i'm into those kind of deals all day but i'm i'm not in the market um i wish i could find actually i reached out to that viewer and was like hey is there any contact information in her documentation and she said she didn't see anything um because i was going to email them and see if i could get one because i'd love to check it out 600 watts would be uh cool I wish Anchor would release a powerhouse variant using LiPo cells. They make quality stuff. Yeah, I like Anchor. All of my power bricks are Anchor. I didn't even put that together until about a year or so ago. I was like, man, they are all Anchor. I, I, the prices, man, I, I get them. I get them for very good prices. Rad Power, I like theirs too. Rad Power seems to be on the 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 right side of technology in terms of putting features into their power banks that I like. Um, I do want to, let's see, we talked about the voltage, volts times amps equals watts. I do want to talk about this Rich Solar 200 watt panel and the implications. Hopefully you guys have seen the video, but the reason why I like that panel so much is because it starts out at a voltage of like 24.3 which is the highest it'll get. It may get a little higher than that. And then it kind of like the operating voltage is 20 volts. And then the amps is 9.8. Um, the reason why I like that is because compared to say a new power, and I didn't get to talk about this in the video, but the new power 200 watt and a 210, theirs kind of lives in the 17 volt range. And then they'll have like 11 amps of power some I've even have seen have 12 amps of power and that's just leaving too much power on the table. So if realistically it drops down to about 16 or 15 volts and then you use that um, limit, that hard amp limit of the EB70, that's 15 times eight. I don't know what that is, but it's not close to 200. That's for sure. I think it's 133 or something like that. I may have done the math on something around there. That's why I like the Rich Solar. The Renogy 200 watt panel also has um, a high voltage in the same range as a Rich Solar, but I've seen that thing as long, as high as $280. And I'm not spending that much money on a 200 watt panel. I like to spend less than $1 per watt on a panel, which is why I have two sets of two panels in parallel <laughs> because uh, what well, a Renogy doesn't really apply because that was a hundred bucks, but that HQST panel, I got them for $80 a piece. So I paid 160 for 200 Watts. It's just, you know, EB 70 with that freaking eight amp limit. Ridiculous. I got some water this time. So I got the folding panels for Louisiana hurricanes to charge the little power banks and then discovered how well, how well they power. Yeah, that, that's one thing I do like about those panels. But again, my lifestyle is not congruent with that. Uh, they have those ports built into them so that you can power, you can send power directly to a device. But the idea sometimes with panels is because 
the sky is not always sunny and clouds fly over. Sometimes those panels, well, in the past, when a cloud comes over, they don't necessarily reboot as quickly. Reboot, that's a bad term. Um, so you may think you're getting power, but if you got a cheaper panel, some of you guys who have those cheaper panels may want to test this. If you put shade over it, how quickly does that panel recover? I'd be curious about that. Please let me know. Somebody said they had like the lilac or the linson or something like that. Let me know what those panels do when you shade them, how quickly they recover. What's going on, Anthony, man? How you feeling today? All right. All right. All right. <clears throat> Hit that like button, y'all. <laughs> yeah, we'll show that one. Go ahead. Hit that like button if you like the video. <laughs> Joe Trot says cheap backpacking solar panels let their voltage fall too low. Interesting, which may not charge devices that are looking for five volts. That is very compelling. Hey, Deborah. I just got Melissa says I just got the AC 200P on Friday trying to see if I should go with all 100 watts or 200 watt panels. My yard is large but I still don't want panels everywhere. I'm gonna tell you something, watch my video about unboxing the 200 watt rich solar. That's another reason why I got it. It's a few inches shorter than the new power. Um, I think the eco worthy one is shorter. It's the smallest of them. I think it comes in at about 58 inches. I got the tabs up, let me just check. But I believe it comes in at 58 inches and the rest of them sit at about 62 or 63. And yeah, I wasn't a fan of that. If I'm going to get a big panel, I want it to be as small as possible. All right, I'm looking at the new power 210 on Amazon, trying to see the measurements here. Yeah, 65 inches by 26. So it's taller. The voltage, it says 16.77 and the amps are 12.48. So you'd be throwing away a whole four of some odd amps. Um, how does that work? So if you're living at, you're looking at 15 volts, 15 times four is 60. You're throwing away 60 watts of power. And that's at its peak performance. I just couldn't get into it. That's why I went with Rich Solar. Does that make sense? Because I, I, I can sit there for a minute if it doesn't. Yes, South Padre Q. That non-refundable thing is really peculiar. You want to look at, click on the non-refundable and read the details because I think if it's defective, you can return it. But don't quote me on that. I ran into the issue with my EcoFlow River. I tried to go with them. Yes. Speak up. Huh? Sure. I ran into that issue with my EcoFlow River um, where I wanted to return it through Amazon and get it exchanged because I got such a good price on it. I got it for 280 and by the time I was dealing with my issues, it was back up to 300 So if I got my money back, I would have had to spend an extra $20 plus tax. So, I, you know, I should have did it, but I don't know if I would because money is important to me. I'm going to scroll up a second. Did I miss a move? What's up? Oh yeah, make sure you pay attention to your refund policy or your return policy on these devices. One could deduce that the reason why Amazon doesn't allow you to exchange them or return them is because of the cost that they incur shipping the device back to them. Which one? The Bouge RV panels are very good. I like the idea of them uh, for a while. I like that 180. And at 170, I was worried about the size of them because um, I was used to having my smaller panels. This is my son, hmm, Ivan. You can say hello, buddy. The camera's right there. Okay, you're at me? Yeah, you just can't see it because the screen is zoomed in because daddy's getting old and can't see the letters. <laughs> Maybe my eyes are just getting old. Maybe you need new eyeballs. <laughs> I need glasses, probably. All right, all right. Um, one thing I do want to talk about today is series and parallel. I'll get to that in a second um, for anybody who's curious about that. 
the only thing obnoxious <laughs> are these like <laughs> I do have an email address. It's on my about page. It's uh, solar questions at askgod.com. It's like, man, I, you know, I, I, I guess at some point I'll play YouTube's game. All right. Don't be silly. <laughs> oh, nice. My rich 200 watt just got dropped off. Silver stacks prepper is going to be out of here ASAP Ferg. <laughs> Melissa, let me swing back to your question about the size of the panels and kind of bring some closure to that. Um, I personally would prefer to have 200 watt panels than 100 watt panels, just from a, a standpoint of I like mobility. I like uh, to be able to move them easily. If you have a set space, then who cares? But if they cost the same, why not just get the 200 watt panel? It's not that much heavier. Um, it is a smaller space because you only have rails around one panel, which also makes it lighter. I would go with the 200 watts. I don't know if that has any implications for any smaller portable power stations, but you say you have that AC 200P. So you, you should be, I, I would go with the 200 watt panels. I'd rather have two 200 watt panels than four 100 watt panels. Because then another thing I was talking about with Allison and her panel setup is you got to manage all those cables and to get four panels to go side to side by each other and then to get your cable to connect to that and i mean realistically everybody's going to have an extension cable and they aren't bound together but it's something to think about it's definitely something to think about amazon asked me to be a product tester are you talking to joe i'll just let those live like brother led does the 12 7 I was telling you about wattage drops when clouds pass, but it jumps up quick when the sun comes back. Uh, yeah, that is what I'm asking. Thank you. Hey, thank you for welcoming my, uh, my little seed. If you have an issue, contact the seller directly, so on and so forth. I have the 180 watt Bouge RV panel mounted on my truck cap and charge my power stations on the go that's a good idea i like that well i bought the rich solar so i <laughs> i looked into it quite heavily the one the only one i missed was somebody told me about the eco worthy there's a 195 watt panel that they sell um what's going on rick what's happening 111 man sheesh i don't know how to i don't know how y'all deal with it i guess we adjust but Led's wife was talking about how she was in Vegas and, you know, even the breeze was hot. I just, I can't do it. I like comfort too much as an adult. Dennis, what's happening? Over paneling 100 or 200 watts for cloudy days on a sunny day. Have you heard heat being a detriment? Is that all? Have you heard of heat being a detriment to the panels or generator? Well, you definitely don't want your power station out in the sun under no circumstances. Um, I have put power stations under panels to keep them in the shade. That typically works. I hot for solar panels and so, um, oh yeah, 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 definitely. You have to have airflow because heat just, it reduces uh, efficiency. Um, so it, they get hot and then their voltage or whatever goes down a little bit and then they won't put out as much cool panels. Like if you go outside and you test and you sprinkle some water on your panels, it'll cool them off and then they'll put out more power. But it's not worth it. You only get that power for a few moments. Um, you have to be able to get that power for the whole hour. So again, it's like driving. If you drive 70 miles an hour for five minutes, I mean, that doesn't do you any good. Um, I learned that lesson while speeding the DC, just like, eh, what, what good is it going 90 really? If I can't go it for an hour, <laughs> I guess it all adds up. Indeed, <laughs> grumpy old man prefers some uh, AC for sure. All right, so um, I wanna talk about parallel versus series 
and I'll do a demonstration using some wires. That's the best way I could do because my panels are in use. Dennis, give me some clarity on what you're asking because I, I think you're making a good point. You can over panel um, a power station. You have to be careful with that because I don't, not everything fits every situation. Um, and I don't hear people talking about that much, but I don't want people messing up their power stations, messing around with me. So you can over panel a device. For example, let's look at the Golabs. Uh, a couple people have the Golabs. It takes in about, I think it's rated to take in about 60 watts, not from solar, but you can put a 100 watt panel on it because typically what these devices do is they limit the amps. Um, so it won't let anything more than the amps that it's allowed at the voltage rating, much like the EB70. It's like no matter what you, no matter how many amps you throw at that thing, it's not going to allow in more than eight amps of power. What do you think of the Renogy Eclipse panels versus their regular panels? I'll tell you what, um, Will Prowse got sent one uh, recently and he tested it and that thing put out 101 watts. I was thoroughly impressed and a little jealous. <laughs> and it's such good looking panels. I don't want to deviate, but while we're talking about those panels, they are, my understanding is that they're sun power panels, which is, that's what those Renogy Eclipses are made of. That's what the Blue 80 SB200 and 120 are made of. And I think Jackery has those panels in their stuff as well. I was thinking about um, people who live in apartments and I talked about possibly trying to put a solar panel outside of your window, but all of these folding solar panels, they typically unfold four panels. So if you hang that out of your window, that just seems a little interesting. I don't know what you would do. Maybe you could put weights on it. I don't even know how you would hang it out of your window, but I feel like people are smart. You don't have power, you figure it out. But Sun Power has a little 50 watt panel. And I thought that that would be a good um, option to even just put in your window and to get some power because it's only like so big. I don't know how big it is, but 50 watt panels are easily manageable. I have a Renogy one. So I thought that was a good option and you could possibly put that out of your window. I don't know what you would do to, I was thinking about this, but I didn't come up with a good solution. I'm not as motivated, but. How would you hang a panel out of your window? I talked about how they have grommets on them, but I don't know. Do you recommend the EcoFlow Max? I'll tell you. I like, I would prefer having two EcoFlow Rivers over the EcoFlow Max, unless you got the EcoFlow Max for a really good price. Um, figure out your watt, your cost per watt. And if two, EcoFlow Rivers cost about the same thing or a little bit more, considering the fact that that thing gives you two inverters, two USB-C 100 watt ports, two 12 volt uh, lighter plugs. I'd rather that. I mean, if you needed the capacity, I talked about this a little bit before, you could daisy chain them together and get 100 watts into one from the other. It's like if you needed one to run something longer, that's the only reason why I think people should get the max is because you only need to power something and you need to power that something for longer. So it'll stay in one spot. You need it to run as long as possible. Oh, okay, I get it. I still would get two, but that's per my needs. The device is cool though, but let me mention this. Hobotech, when he tested the Max, he said it got less power with both of those things together than the device, the base itself. Also something to consider, now that I'm thinking about it, what happens if you buy the base model at one point and then let's say six months down the line, you add the max battery to it? What's the BMS going to do with those? Because maybe they're in parallel because when you put something in series, series treats it all as one thing. But even in parallel, it makes the stuff match like uh, it's either the volts or the amps kind of the volts, the volts kind of settle down to be on a playing field. So. You almost, you almost make the other one limp along at the old capacity of the other one. Now, I'm no electrician. I'm, I'm no engineer or anything like that. That's just me thinking from a, a, a consumer standpoint. And Hobotech mentioned it in his, his review 
of that one. And I thought it was a very astute point. I thought it was a very good point. Nice. I saw that. I was going through my whole Wayne said I got the ego for 194, the Facebook group discount. I was actually able to take advantage of that, but I wasn't in the market. I had just gotten it for 280. I felt some I didn't feel played or anything like that, but I felt like, man, I could add another one of those to my arsenal for 200 bucks. But I just I didn't have the budget for it and I wasn't going to force it. But I was intrigued, man. I, I was like, oh, geez. Hey, Janice. Solar is new to me. I'm a senior on a fixed budget. I hear that a lot. I'm learning as much as I can from you and Lev Farmer. Thanks for helping us. You're welcome. Email me if you have to um, something specific you have questions about. Um, take advantage while I'm small because time is not unlimited. <laughs> I'm going to scroll up a little bit. Yeah, Melissa, I, I think the 200 watt panels. Um, it's like it's having four panels instead of instead of two, having three panels instead of six. You know what I mean? It's just it's it's more it's better. I don't know, that's how I feel about it. I'll see if Dennis commented again because I, I'd like to get some clarity on that. That's interesting. Um, Joe says a lot of panels in parallel may need thicker wiring. I don't know enough about that and I haven't dealt with enough panels. I'd have to kind of go through my archive and my brain to start making sense of that because I think it's it's easier to have volts go. Don't quote me on that. I, 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 I'd mess you guys up with what I'd say. I know one's easy to go over a distance versus the other. I think it's amps that need the higher, um, the bigger cable. Volts don't need um, the bigger cable. I think I think that's it. The overpowering is to maintain a higher wattage on cloudy days. Yes, it, I mean, it just doubles what you would get. So having more than one panel, let's say you have two panels in parallel, it just doubles what you would get from one panel. So if you would get about 10 percent from a panel on an overcast day um, and I mean like a really overcast day, because sometimes you can get more than that. I've seen my panels produce about 30 watts when the sun is not out. So if I have two panels, I get 60 watts, which is cool. That's pretty cool. And you got a laptop that take for, takes 45 watts or a TV that runs off of 50 watts, so you can change the settings to get it lower. I mean, you could power your, your entertainment quite easily. Most of them do have grommets in the corners for hanging, but then what would you do as it relates to your window and then securing it? I mean, I, I'd go through a whole bunch of stuff. I mean, if it was like real, like hurricane came through, nobody has power, then I just do what I had to do. I'd hang it out of the window. If I had to put weights on the <laughs> um, end to keep it from flinging all over the place. This is me talking about a folding panel hanging out of an apartment window because people in apartments typically don't have balconies or a place to put their panels. I figure it out. I mean, just make sure it's safe. That's basically correct as it relates to, I guess, voltage. A lower voltage in a parallel arrangement can bring a higher one down. Okay. Pinball preparedness found a deal on the EcoFlow 1300 for under $900. That's interesting. What's going on? Grow it, eat it. That's, that's, that's what's up right there. That's a good channel name. You know exactly what you're getting into there. Okay. It says pinball got it from a uh, reconditioned stock, which is interesting. The Paxis 120 watt portable and it's working good for you. Yeah, I think they should work fine. The question is how long will they work? That's what I worry about. But you know what I mean? At the end of the day, if it stops working, hopefully it stops working within the warranty and you can get another one. Consider your house wiring. 14 gauge is used on 50 amp circuits. For 20 amp circuits, you need 12 gauge wires will, or the wires will heat up. That's an interesting thing. I don't want to deviate that way because I, I talk very badly about people when they have to tell you don't plug your air conditioner into an extension core. And I'm like, why? But anyway, make an S-shaped hook with a wire coat hanger. I was thinking hanger 
and hang them out of your apartment windows. An S-shaped hook with a wire hanger. Okay, I, I can't visualize it, but I like the way your brain is thinking. You should let everyone know that getting started in solar becomes addictive. <laughs> Pookie from New Jack City. Anybody here um, that has not seen New Jack City? <laughs> I'm just curious. Let me know. Say, no, I have not seen New Jack City. FM Mother of Two, hello. I bought the EB70. I'm going back and forth on the panels. Tonight, you guys have helped me decide on a 200 watt panel, trying to get my ducks in a row if a hurricane heads to Louisiana. I dig that. I'm from New Orleans, so I, I get it. It's easier to deal with that one panel, man. Dealing with two panels, it's it's okay. But if you have inclement weather and you're pulling those things inside often, then it's 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 not a good look. That's true. Yeah, you got to be careful. I just don't like this idea, but that's a societal commentary. Like people just do stupid things. And because people do stupid things, they start telling us all what we can and can't do. And it's just like, well, why? Why can I put in an air conditioner? I mean, I, I'm not running a 12,000 BTU, 8,000 BTU, 10,000 BTU, 5,000 BTU. You should be able to put that on a short extension cable. But should I run, you have the AC 200P, she asked. Melissa asked, should I run the 200 watts in parallel or series? Um, the AC 200P. I think you have to run it in series. You don't have the option for parallel because the AC 200P requires a higher voltage. That's the difference between the 200P and the max, one difference. The max has a lower voltage range. So I think it starts at 10 volts and then goes all the way up to whatever it goes to. The 200P starts at like 45 volts. So you have to put two panels in series um, so you get let's say 24 24 does it is it 45 volts maybe it's lower than that but you have to go series to meet the voltage threshold of that device 35 that makes sense okay that makes a lot of sense because remember earlier i talked about how panels um typically are rated at about 20 21 volts so once you put two of them in series series combines the voltage together parallel combines the amperage together so that means parallel, the voltage stays the same. And in series, the amperage stays the same. Can you help me find a good extension cable that is Anderson too? I think, ooh, I don't know. I don't, uh, I don't have a good opinion of Anderson. Um, my understanding is that it's not waterproof, but I mean, you wouldn't need waterproof at your Jackery, but Jason Noy, he likes Anderson. I mean, a lot of people like those real connectors, real connectors over the barrel connectors because the barrel connectors can come out so easily. But those Andersons and the XT60s and the XT90s, they are legit. Like you push them in and they're in. You got to really tug on them to get it out. I'm sure too, Joe. Yeah, you should check Amazon. So what's the goal there? You, you said... Um, I lost your comment. Can you help me find a good extension cable that is Anderson to, I think, 7.9 or 8 millimeter? What's the goal there? I know it's for the Jackery. The Jackery doesn't give you the MC4 to Anderson cable, and I'm pretty sure it doesn't, it doesn't give you any MC4 cable. What kind of panels are you hooking it up to? All of my solar panels are, solar cables are 10 gauge. It cost me a little more, but worth it. Yeah, I dig that. Most of my, I looked at my order history, most of my solar extension cables, until I got the 50 foot or 12 gauge. So I was kind of proud of myself that I didn't delve into like the 14s and the 16s. Someone who knows, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think the gauge of the panel itself is like 14. Um, which I find to be interesting, but they're so short that that's, I guess that's okay. I have two 100 watch Renergy panels. That is good for the Blue Eddy EB70, correct? It it will work because of the EB70. I want to say no panel arrangement is good, <laughs> um, but that will work. I've seen as high as 
one I don't know. Yeah, but it'll work. Eighty-two <laughs> percent. I'm still late. <laughs> I gave you 40, 40 minutes or so lead time, so you can blame it on me. It's it's my fault you're late. All right. So the best way to demonstrate um, series and parallel, my panels are in use. So what I did was I grabbed my. Let's do it like this. I grabbed my 10 foot. This is my first extension cable right here. So what you want to do is for anybody who's a beginner, you want to pretend. I got to see my whole screen here. You want to pretend that this is your cables from two solar panels, right? You have one male, one female, right? One female, one male. How you hook a panel up together in series is you take and you put the female into the male of the other one. And then you end up having something that looks like this. And then what you do after this, they are connected in series now. And series means that in my mind, it's going to treat these panels as one panel. That's how I make sense of it. Correct me if I'm wrong, but they're no longer side by side. They're kind of in a line. So if you get shade on one of these panels, it's going to knock down. Um, yeah, I, my understanding is it's going to knock down the power output of the whole thing. So the whole thing could be need will be considered to be shaded. So at this point, right, you got your panels connected. This denotes one panel. This denotes one panel. They're positive and negative or male and female. I shouldn't say ignore positive and negative. Their male and female is connected, leaving one free male and one free female. Then you take your solar panel. I mean, your power station cable. I got this off of Amazon. <laughs> I'll put a link in the dip after uh, this thing is over. I like this. The quality is a little suspect on that XT. 60 connector it doesn't look as good as the picture but um it's like double the price it should be right now so y'all don't go buy it wait till it goes back down but then you will hook male into female here male into female here and then your panels are in series and you plug this into your power station did that make sense <laughs> that was that was a lot I'm trying to unplug them now. It's freaking MC4 connectors. Because now I want to try and show you what parallel looks like. So we have this situation. This is what series will look like. Two panels connected together in the middle. Two wires coming out the end to make one connection. Right? Oh, my comments aren't updating. Wait, I'll pause there. Does anybody have any questions about... Um, series. Hey, MJ. You're just going to be MJ from now on. You told me I'm, I'm going to keep it. Okay, that's good. Thank you. I got those. Mine are similar. What do you mean yours are similar? The heck? Some flies tangling just landed on my desk. I've never seen that before. Ignore the colors. You won't connect red to red. It will be male to female. That's right. You don't you don't care about colors or anything like that. You almost can't get it wrong. I know, right? It's pretty cool. What's going on, Joe? Well, Joe Tyson. <laughs> I can't even call you Joe T. Both of y'all got T last names. I got a short coming out about um, an MC4 tool. Uh, I'll give you the short version. The Bouge RV ones, don't get them. The Renergy ones work. Um, Rick said, you need an MC4 tool that saves your fingernails. Man, listen, I had to make myself spend that $8 um, because it's just I do too much with these panels to justify it. I, I move stuff around all the time. I'm unplugging stuff. 
I'm worried about the audio. Said so get a USB fan to keep the bugs away. I guess I, I don't want to hear that fan noise in the background. I think that that would be disturbing to the. Yeah, it's tough to understand. You're right, man. Everything solar is too mind warping at first. All right. So now, parallel. <clears throat> These are parallel cables. They have two females. Well, two females to a male, and then they have two males to a female. Now, this one gets a little interesting. You kind of have to cross your wires a bit. Let me see if I could demonstrate this on camera. Consider these your panels, right? This may be hard. So you have two panels. This is panel number one. This is panel number two. Male, female on this side, male, female on this side. What you have to do is you have to take and you have to connect this into both of the... So this is the male. You have to connect the male into the female of both of the panels. I'm not going to do it. I feel like y'all get it. That has to go into both of them, right? This female has to go into male of both of the can panels. And then you end up with one string that you connect either your extension to, if you have an extension, or you connect your solar MC4 to your specific power station and you plug it in. And that has put the panels in what's called parallel. And you know, that's it. Boom, done. What is series connection used for in comparison to parallel? A really beginner question, I know. Yeah, that's fine. I don't mind that. Uh, since you mentioned cloudy days, I can get quite a f I get quite a few. Can I parallel two rich 200 watt panels to get more wattage? Dumb question. These aren't dumb questions. These are questions. All right. The series connection is really <sighs> It's really like, oh, here's the benefit of series outside of all of the technical stuff. You can hook your panels in series from the door. You don't need no cables. You hook one panel to the other. You have one cable at the end. You're done. Um, you can hook multiple panels in series. You can hook multiple panels in parallel, but the parallel, can able, the parallel cable for four panels is essentially it looks like this and consider my arms to be the output. So instead of having two male and two female on this end, um, you would have four. So you would plug four positives into here. Positives. You would plug four males into here and four females into here. And then all of those panels will be in parallel. And then you could hook multiple panels together in series, as many as your power station will allow. So think about it from this standpoint. Let's say each panel you have, you have four 100 watt energy panels. They each run at 20 volts or so. Your power station allows for up to 145 volts, right? Remember series combines the volts. You have four panels at 20 volts a piece, 20, 40, 60, 80, all in series, no problem with your, uh, with your power station, you're good to go. You add another one, 100. Now, what you do have to pay attention to is what the high or open circuit voltage of your panels is because it may be a little higher. Let's say um, it's 22. So then you 22, 22, 22, 22, 22. All in series, that should still be okay for your AC200P. The thing about parallel is a little bit interesting because the power station will regulate the amps that it can put in. So if you put, let's say, let's say, let's four, you put four panels in parallel on your four connectors, right? Your voltage stays the same. So if those four panels are all running at 20 volts a piece, volts won't increase. The amps will. Each panel, each 100 watt panel at about 20 volts has about five amps. So that's four times five, that's 20 amps. 
your power station needs to be able to take in 20 amps. But even if it can't take in the 20 amps, whatever its limit is, it just won't allow more amps than that, typically. I don't know if there's some power stations out there that will let you exceed the amps, but you know, for example, I put four, <laughs> which would be a waste, four 100 watt Ren Energy panels in parallel and hook it to my EB70. That's still gonna be 20 volts limited at eight amps, even though I'm pushing 20 amps into that device or I'm trying to push, it won't accept it. That's why when on LEDs live, somebody asked if you could put more than two panels in parallel, I said in a comment, but yeah, you would be throwing the power away. That's the same example with getting the new power 200 watt um, thing that runs at 17 volts and then gives you 12 point something amps. You lose four amps. So why spend $200 on a device on a panel that won't give you the best bang for your buck, which is why I like the rich solar. I hope that makes sense. Let me know if it doesn't. Series is used if your power station requires a higher charge voltage, such as the AC200P. That is correct. I need to order more Y cables to parallel my other. I feel big time learning. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Joe Trot says, do not use series if your power station can only accept a maximum of 30 volts. If you're lucky, it will simply cut off and not charge. If you're unlucky, it will fry the charge controller. That is correct. So your EB70s, your Jackery 300s, your Jackery 240s, it's typically the cheaper ones max out at about 30 volts. When you start getting into the EB150, the EB240, um, maybe even the Delta. Don't quote me on the Delta, though. I'm not sure about that. It has some weird stuff going on there. Um, but definitely the AC200 and the AC200P. What is the extension call? It's called, oh, wait, the one you use for series and to wait until, oh, no, 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 that's not an extension. That's an MC4 to various plugs. It has Anderson on here. It has eight millimeter or the one that commonly goes into the older Jackeries, because I don't believe this works on the 1500 in the 2000. It has 5521, um, which is a common one on cheaper power station. And it has XT60, which is a common one on the EcoFlow products. The reason why I bought this MC4 adapter, it's not an extension, it's an adapter, is because when I bought that cheap chiffon um Jackery clone, I didn't have the EB70 and it uses a Jackery plug. So instead of spending $18 on uh, MC4 to just Jackery or eight millimeter or 7.9 millimeter to be technical, I spent like an extra few bucks on this one and I got all these other ones. And I struggled with the quality. I actually exchanged it for another one. I also have my EcoFlow, so that, that worked out too. And then I also have three power stations now that use 5521. Um, I don't have, yeah, the Agway uses Anderson. I haven't tested it yet. But I, I exchanged this cable <laughs> through Amazon. They sent me another one, and the other one was worse. So I just kept this one and sent the other one back. I would have promoted this cable ASAP Ferg if this thing was better. Because in their picture, the sheath covered, covers this. But this doesn't. There's a gap in it. And I, I think it's just poor craftsmanship. But it was only a few bucks extra. I'm trying not to say prices because Amazon tells you not to list prices. But I don't think they tell you you can't say prices. But anyway. Wayne is saying the EB70 works great with the SP200. But I have not gotten more than 144 watts. Yeah, it's like it, I don't consider that to be great. <laughs> I consider that to be okay. That's kind of... Yeah, I've seen my my rich solar has put out 151 watts. But by the time I got down there to film it, it was at like 144 again, a 143. That was easier to understand. I'm, I'm happy to hear you say that. Uh, 
All right, all right. Series sums the voltages of the panels together. Parallel sums the amperage of the panels together. That's right. Joe says that's 20 amps, so the cables cannot be only 14 gauge, or they will, one, heat up, and two, eat into your delivered wattage. Yeah, that's why you burn outlets and stuff like that. You're running too much power through those um, outlets. I didn't know about that at some point. I did something down in my basement where one of my plugs is fried because of that. It probably be, It's probably because I had a heater or something running down there. In Vino Veritas, how big an inverter and battery would you need to run a water well pump? <laughs> I'm ready. I'm reading they have a very high power load. My specialty is power stations, man. I don't I don't know a whole lot. I mean, I, I know a good bit about the batteries and inverters, but you would have to know how much power your device uses. And nine times out of 10, almost 10 times out of 10, it's going to be on whatever literature you got for that pump. It'll tell you how many amps it pulls or how many volts it pulls or how many watts it pulls. Various um, companies list it different ways, but volts times amps equals watts. And our volts is static. Your volts are always going to be like 110 or 120 from your wall outlet, unless it's a 12 volt um, device. So even if they only show you the amps, I actually looked at my fridge earlier. My, my fridge runs at six amps and it, it won't use that much energy all the time. That's probably only when the, amp, the compressor comes on. Oh man, I appreciate being appreciated, Silver Stacks Prepper. More panels in parallel on cloudy days gives you more watch. That is a fact. I never get to the point where I want four panels in parallel <laughs> because it's just too much to manage. I do have to do some research on what I would do if I had two 200 watt rich solar panels. But these power stations are so small. I, I My power load is so low and these power stations are so small. I don't know that I would go through the, I don't know that I would bother, and I have so many. I, know that, I don't know that I would bother putting more than two panels in parallel. But if you have one power station and you have four panels for some odd reason, then yeah, you know, put them in parallel for overcast days. Why not? Can you use, uh, I would imagine so, as long as the voltage and the amps are close. Linda says, can you use rich solar panels and Renergy panels together? I have Renergy, can I get a rich panel to add in series? Yeah, that should be fine. Both 100, both are gonna be about 20 volts by five amps, 19 volts by 5.5 amps. Even if they vary a little, it's not gonna drop much because they'll match in some capacity, whatever is relevant for series, but that should be fine. I personally bought two Renergy panels because I wasn't gonna have a Renergy panel and an HQST panel together because it, it was gonna look weird. <laughs> Plus I liked the Renergy panels after a while. So 10 amp won't harm an EB70. It will just ignore. Yes, it will not go over eight amps. I have a short on my um, page or the graph where I show two panels in parallel and maxing out at eight amps. It just won't go higher. <laughs> just the name chiffon sounds fishy. Yeah, it sounds like a fake uh, what a designer name. <laughs> Maybe that Chiffon, I think Chiffon is a, a a real designer name. I think so. That sounds familiar. I wouldn't know though, right? Have a Jackery 1000 and two Solar Saga 100 for my BiPAP. Okay. And Costco fridge, but now trying to buy an EB70 for a relative in Arizona for CPAP, AC portable freezer frustrating helping stubborn family hey just don't help them <laughs> i just wouldn't help them jeez some people got to learn sister b what's up kimber jack uh, 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 uh. if i heard you right i someone just said on the eb70 two 100 watt panels 
on the EV70 and only draws 141 watts. Should I then just get one 100 watt HQST panel? Having a device that big only pull in about 70 to 80 watts seems like a great disservice to that device. And it's sad that the company did a great disservice to us by limiting it at eight amps. But T, I think it was you, somebody emailed me, I think it was T Washington, that emailed me the reason why they were like, they didn't want the product to overheat or something like that. Um, so it was like a safety concern. Well, he's saying our the graph is saying wells take a lot of power consider and consider the surge Ban everything appreciate you man. You out here answering questions a Thunder boomer has started. A, what does that mean? Oh, okay. 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 I'm gonna get out. I, I got that. That's so funny, man Who knew our parents were right when they told us to turn the lights off and stuff when it was raining? There's different reasons for that, but if people still did that, you probably wouldn't have like brownouts or blackouts because the draw on the grid wouldn't be so high and then these things wouldn't turn off. Now, sometimes it's trees and stuff falling, but that was an interesting thing. I thought about that. <laughs> I bought Renergy because they were on sale and Lev Farmer got them. So he was the info guy, less than $100 a piece. Yeah, I bought them at 103 and then they went on sale for like 89. I was tempted to send them back just to get my $11 back. That feels petty, but it's $22, man. What's the best and cheapest lightweight solar panels to go with the Blue Eddy EV7? The best, cheapest? Uh, according to Jason Noy, the Rock Pals. That's the ones he liked. Check out his channel, J A S O N O I D. He talked about how he likes two pairs of the rock pals they have like three iterations and he likes the boulder panels b-a-l-d-r i think ask Ab, you are very helpful and knowledgeable your information is fantastic and you guys make it easy to understand thank you thank you so much yeah i've never heard of a thunder boomer either <laughs> Maria says $11 is $11. That is a fact. That is a fact. If I didn't think I would have to like drive to, you know, Coles to bring them back and all that jazz, that's something I weigh too. Like, how much is my time worth? And I'd just be like, you know what? Whatever. My time is worth more than that. Yeah. Um, what else did I want to talk about? I think we pretty much covered everything. We talked about volts and amps and how that equals watts. We talked about, you know, solar uh, series in parallel. Um, the only other thing we can get into is this idea. Oh, the idea of what panels should go with what devices. And we kind of touched on that a little bit, too. Um, I think it was T. Washington who was asking. I don't know if I completed that thought. It's like you could buy one panel for the EB70, but you'd only get 70 to 80 watts. That thing would take, it take a good while to charge. So even though it sucks that you can't maximize the power output, I mean, you can if you get a rich solar or a Renergy, but they're more expensive. I felt myself saying, I felt myself feeling like I got to put the two panels on it. I mean, I want the most power I can get. So I, I did. Facts. Our DeGrasse says the EB70 has a stable chemistry, long life, lots of ports, and I can pick it up. Oh, you know what? That EB70, a lot of people have been hinting at this. I kind of picked up on this too. The handle is always warm. I don't know what that's about. The only thing I can think of is that wireless charging pad is there. But yeah, I don't know. I don't know. That's because I'm not baller enough. Silver stacks prepper. <laughs> My channel's too small for uh, YouTube to waste time trying to take money from me on that 70 uh, 30 split or whatever it is. I don't know. Um, I can't super chat. I did set up um, Cash App 
and Venmo under Ask Ive Solar if someone wanted to be so kind to send your boy a couple coins. Um, so, you know, there's that. I have yet to experience that. I just opened my box yesterday. You gonna do the video 2% on your EB70? That is correct. The EB70 can only run multiple panels in parallel. Series will, it will fry it. Well, I know one dude who put his SP120 panels in series and he fried it. It wouldn't charge up anymore. That AC200P, man, it's impressive. That uh, the Max is probably gonna be a, a bit better, but um, that one's the GOAT in my opinion right now for two grand. I'm kind of looking at, I'm doing some research on the Delta uh, just for you guys because people are always asking about their air conditioners in their fridge. I don't, my money is not quite favorable for those devices. So I didn't research them a whole lot, but I started to look into them because people ask about, they talk about what they need and so on and so forth. Let me make another declaration. You can't secure yourself um, power wise on a budget. I was thinking about this today. You just can't, you can't do it. Unless you cool with like using a small fan or something like that, you have to spend the coin to give you that peace of mind that your food won't go bad and um, your fridge won't stop working. That's a good question, Maria. Um, what's the advantage of having two EB70s? So I feel like the advantage of that is the advantage of having any two devices. Um, so you look at the EB70, you get 716 or 14 watt hours on paper. You don't get that in real life. Um, so for $1,000, you could have about 1,500 watt hours of battery. Now you think about the EB150 that costs like $900. I think it's $999. It's been on sale for $899. And you get a 1,500 watt hour capacity battery. But then you got one device. So if you had two EB70s or two anything, that's two different zones of your house you can cover with power. Now, there is some there is some validity to this idea that I don't need two spaces. I just want one to last longer. Then, you know, you get one big device. I prefer to have two small devices. Within my budget, I should say. So, you know, I, is there any other benefit? Then it's like compared to what? Uh, I don't know what I would compare it to. <laughs> Alpha says, uh, <laughs> Bluetti killing pockets. They revamped the AC200P to the AC200 Max with expandable batteries. Now they are coming out with a new AC300. Somebody mentioned the AC300 and I thought it was a typo because I haven't seen anything about the AC300 on their Instagram feeds, which just seems to be where they break the information. So I, I have to try and figure if you have a link or something, email it to me because YouTube may block it or drop it. I don't think I have it set to block links here. I may have to at some point because people are ridiculous. So new AC300, 3000 watts and the B300 modular solar power batteries. That's interesting. I wonder how those batteries can be charged. I think I asked that on the post, but I don't know if I got a straight answer. They were like, you can charge them from number one, 12 volt, and then number two, they said coming soon. So that wasn't very helpful. T Washington says, and two 100 watt panels in parallel should be fine, right? Okay, I just wanna be sure, don't wanna fry it, yes because the volts stay at 20 or the volts stay at 21 or 18 or whatever your panels are, whatever. Like even if you do, I mean, that's kind of silly. You wouldn't want to do two 200 watt panels in parallel. I mean, I, silly for me, but the volts will stay the same. The amps will double, but then it gets limited. So, you know, yeah, you should be fine. You will be fine. I mean, I have parallel cables. That's how I powered it all the way up until I got the 200 watt 12 volt solar panel. Keep in mind that there's a 200 watt 24 volt panel. That's something totally different. 
You don't want to do that for the EB70. You could possibly do that on your AC200P. Um, that's an option, but not the EB70. No bueno. Yeah, uh, he's a cool dude. He pops around. Uh, he's down there in Texas. I think his K, he has a weird name, but it's like KB, KP boy something or another. I'm still waiting on the EP500 to arrive, and now they sell something else. Wow. That EP500 was interesting. It was too heavy, though, man. I felt like I get it. That's going to be ideal for somebody. You're not going to want to move that thing around because it's such a beast, but that's a little too rich for my blood. That's a lot too rich for my blood. I put two 100-watt Renergy panels on the EB70 and saw it go up to 142. It leveled out at around 135. Okay, thanks for reporting that, Kimber Jack. I haven't experienced warm tops on the EB70. Thanks for the info. Now I won't worry if that happens. Yeah, it's just, it's subtle. It's real subtle. You could almost find yourself wondering if you're tripping. Like, are my hands hot? What? Why do I feel warmth here? And the EB150 can run 1,000 watt appliances as it relates to the EB150 compared to two EB70s. Um, yeah, I hear you. I, I want an AC200 here too. <laughs> but East, uh, I haven't made my first purchase yet, but I'm always learning something important on very every video. Thank you for sharing your knowledge. You're welcome. I share freely. What I know, I my community can know. The solar game is moving fast. I bought an AC200P and the next day, the 200. Yeah, that's tough. That is tough. What's going on, DIY? What's happening? Man, I know it's late over there. <laughs> I don't know what to say. I did one, and it was just me opening, opening it. <laughs> it was a mess to me. That is, yeah. I, you know, you, you did it. You're doing a video for your community, not necessarily for YouTube. Um, it may be better to just like do a video of your impressions of it after uh, opening it versus just opening it. That's how I think. I think um I think uh someone asked me a question. Um, I like one of the questions that Led was asked, which is what would you buy, what would you do differently if you knew then what you knew now, what you know now. Um I think my perfect duo for the money and how I would try to space it out. Is I would just want the AC two hundred. I would want the no. I would want the EcoFlow Pro, and then the EB seventy. I'd want the EB seventy to be better. I mean, as you can't buy anything that's comparable to it. The Jackery compared to it is is a bit of a joke, and the Pro compared to it, it's like it's better, but not quite. <laughs> too late the damage is done maybe i'll try again i respect that look man I, I respect people's time that's why i try to keep my stuff short and to the point i'm already a concise communicator so um i man i want to make a video so bad to other creators it's like man get to the point please get to the point but that's you know that's neither here nor there so i respect that two percent if you feel like the video won't benefit people, I think the main thing you do is you just show that I got one and this is me unboxing it. You're not necessarily unboxing it for the benefit of people. You're just showing your folks that you're a little more prepared. I think there's validity in that. Yeah, I I thought that I thought the. Um, Rick says, I got it super early, and by it, he means the EP500 from um, Blue Eddy, which is the big beastie. It looks like a rolling dialysis machine. I'm going to let this plane go by. I've actually been looking into food warmers. I looked into a food warmer some time ago, 
I looked into um, heat warmers, water, like to warm water, but uh, I didn't see a, a good spread of things that were like low wattage. They all seemed like they were kind of junky. And I, I don't, you know, I'm not trying to get electrocuted out here in these streets. Eddie says, anyone building 12 volt battery packs? I looked very, well, thank you. I appreciate that. Silver Stacks Prepper. <laughs> um, I've been watching Jehu's videos about expanding the capacity of the AC200 and AC200P using those scooter packs. I was intrigued by that um, a lot because I'm, I, I want to be able to have my prized portable power station, which is two of them, to run longer without spending a whole lot of money. Um, and that stuff seemed compelling. The only downside is those packs that he put together, they run at a higher voltage. So I can't use them on any of the devices that I have. Oh, you don't have to ask for that, man. You want to be kind? I appreciate that. No pressure. <laughs> you guys are good money. But I appreciate your heart. I, I, I'm, I'm appreciative of that. Yeah, it, he has a different day. Everybody has different lanes. I can appreciate that. Jehu's videos are long, too. I, I'm, I just want him to get to the point sometimes. But that's my preference. Some people like to sit down and kind of delve into the details. I, I, I'm not one of those people, man. Just get to the point. So let me ask y'all a, a question. What is your favorite thing to run off your power station if you have one? My favorite thing is to run my computer. Um, Cause I work from home a lot and I edit videos and stuff <laughs> a lot and to run my internet and to run my TV. I feel like my wife, uh, <laughs> she gives me a hard time. It, it was like this dude up in here talking about preparedness, but the things that he runs is all entertainment. And I'm like, eh, what's up Eco neighbor? Good to see your name here. I try to explain to her that morale is important, <laughs> but she's right. We just don't have them coins for that big stuff. I know it's dope to run your internet from the, the, the sun. The internet is such a crucial tool in the times we live in to not have to pay to run that, even though it's a very nominal amount. I think that that's dope. Yeah, 12 volt fridge on the road, man, that's clutch. Security is important. Alpha Alpha said, I will probably run my parents' CCTV system and CPAP machine. Laptop and 12 volt fridge. I dig it. I want to see if um, these dorm fridges or, you know, the cheap fridges are more efficient because I have one. Um, and I also have to look, I have to pull my deep freezer from the wall. I'm going to do a video about that this week. I'm trying to see uh, if my. EcoFlow River or my EB70 can power my deep freezer. Um, but I want to pull it from the wall to read the label to see how much the amps uh, go up to. It's probably something crazy on that thing. Um, but we'll see. I cannot, Trevor says, while camping a 12 volt blanket. I can't find a 12 volt blanket I'm fond of. I'm, I'm pretty picky though, um, but I want to find one. I also, I'm also not fond of the idea that when people talk about them, they talk about putting them under you and then it reflecting up to your covers and then down. That seems like some real like end of the world type stuff. I just want it to be warm on me. Is that too much to ask? I know. I, you know, I just wanted to be warm on me sitting on the couch, not using the heater or something like that. Linda says you are prepared and you're enjoying what you can before the poop flies. I dig that. The coffee maker and 12 volt fridge. Okay, so the message retracted. Okay, interesting. Oh, he's running a three quart Instapot. The EB70, I feel, is all I need. I don't have large things. I need power, but I do want a small fridge slash freezer like the Bouge RV. I dig that. I dig that. Uh, 
play, um, who said that? Shy. Shy Zahavi. I want a 12 volt blanket, a good one. Um, check out the channel Playing With Sticks. He did a video on 12 volt blankets. Um, that may lead you in a good direction. He kind of talked about like budget and expensive and the output and stuff like that. I don't know if he dealt with the power consumption, but I remember watching that video and be like, oh, it didn't help me a whole lot because that that person, he has a teardrop and they're always out in the wilderness. So their needs are different than mine. So I couldn't take away too much from it. I appreciate that, Alpha. That, that'll work. My um, email address is solar at askive.com for business inquiries. And then for questions, it's solar questions. Do your thing, sir. <laughs> Van says, I have several favorite things. I use my two 100 watt power stations doing power failures for my Wi Fi router and making instant coffee in the two Blue Eddy EB70s for the dorm fridge and small freezer. Van, do you, did you um, change your internet? Or is that your internet? Your internet system has always been the same. Eco says, I do landscaping, so I recharge my power. Yeah, that's what's up when that stuff directly benefits how you make paper. <laughs> Melissa says, yes, I'm trying to do some damage over here in a good way. That is Byron, what's happening? Hybrid car charging the solar when you don't have the sun to charge your solar generator. Interesting. I want to be able to run air conditioning. That's something that's very important to me. If I could get comfort, I'm all, I guess it's about comfort for me. If I could get comfort from the sun, I'm winning. Yeah, it don't get no better than that. Deep freezer, 12 volt fridge, and a laptop light, and a laptop light or two. Discussed about getting a 12 volt fridge and 12 volt blankets with the old man last night. And <laughs> we went through that Texas freeze, and those blankets would have came in very handy. Yes, yes, they would have. I have, um, I bought a, a tent. I have sons. Um, so I bought a tent for that reason. But then I saw, actually, my neighbor gave me a tent. Um, and then I saw a tent on sale on the marketplace. Y'all, please mess with the marketplace, man. Marketplace is where it's at. But I got a tent off of the marketplace for like 10 or 12 bucks or 15 bucks. It's one of the like Ozark trails, the Walmart. But I don't plan on camping in it. I just wanted to be able to have a micro environment in my house so that if stuff got real, we could get into there, um, you know, run a little small heater or whatever and not have to mess around with the whole room. They call it a micro climate, a micro environment. OK, yeah, you did tell me that. Your, your Wi-Fi router burnt up. Anthony says, EB7 runs the three-quart instant pot with no problem. It comes in at 626 watts. Now, instant pot, is that food? Is that the thing that cooks the food? Wi-Fi and Selly. Solar at Ask I. Ah, geez, you got me wondering if that's correct. I'm always doubting myself. Let me make sure. I'm pretty sure that's it, but you know, I doubt myself at times. Yep, solar at askive.com. Is it cheaper? 2% ask, is it cheaper to have more than one EB70 than to just get a larger powered solar generator? Oh, okay, for ban everything. I just put my small deep freezer on the Kumon and it's 300, okay. Can you send me a picture of your deep freezer? Because we don't, I know they sell the deep freezers that are like squarish. We have a deep freezer that's a little bit bigger, and I wonder if it uses more. Okay, Anthony says, yes, a little pressure cooker. My, but it was my understanding that the instant pot, I guess it's not a crock pot. Maybe I'm, what am I thinking about the thing that has to run all day? It's not a crock pot. I don't think it's an instant pot either but it has to run longer. Because I mean, if it uses 600 some odd watts, it's like, that's that's an hour on the EB70. Unless it cooks the food in an hour, <laughs> then, then that's popping. And I'll probably look into an Instant Pot. Oh, you know what? Let me check my notes.
uh, uh, uh. Okay, cool. Yeah, we, we covered everything. Now we're just hanging out. <laughs> I used a 3000 Gold Zero on a power outage with AC Sears 4200 portable for 14 hours. That's interesting. That's a lot of numbers. Okay. I appreciate your help with my questions. I charged my EB70 from the wall outlet. Now I know what to do about solar panels. Oh, I want to have lights, TV, phone. That's one thing about lights. I don't have many lamps in my house. I have one like Walmart mainstays lamp and then we have a couple of desk lamps. So if I ever had a power outage for a while, I do have a lot of flashlights. Um, I love flashlights. Uh, <laughs> if I do have a power outage for a while, then I'll have to use those desk lamps. Um, but I need more, uh, I need more lamps. Uh, something else. What else do I like? I like those little, I got a couple of those, those little $10 mainstays fans from Walmart. They use about 40 watts, 25 on low. I love one of those things from solar. Um, I love one in my Lasco fan. It uses a lot of power. I think it uses 67 watts on low but it really kind of cools the house off. Moving air is much better than stale air. I love using that off of solar. If I have a surplus of solar coming in, I'll just plug a fan into it and let that use it. Another strategy um, that may or may not be relevant to everyone or every device, once you get at about 80%, I, well, once I get at about 80% of charge, I start to use that power. I'm always pass through charging, always, no matter what they say about pass through charging. Some companies warn you about it. Me and Ben, everything kind of talk about that every now and then. Um, once I get to 80 percent, I kind of start to hammer it. And then once I get below 40 percent, I start to get a little cautious about draining it down. I still do it. But in my mind, I want to be cautious about it because lithium ion um and I feel like lithium iron phosphate is still a lithium battery. So they like to live between 40 and 80 percent. Um, that's my understanding. So I kind of live in that realm. And it's OK to deviate. It's OK to fully charge them. It's OK to fully deplete them. But if you know that, then that can better inform your perspective as it relates to how you use them. The EcoFlow River even has an option in the app to set its state of charge to 80 percent. I only did that one time. I did it. I did it once for a couple of days. It was like super bright days. I, I had a surplus of solar, so I didn't want it sitting at 100 percent all day. So I bumped it down to 80 percent. But when there was a storm coming in, I took that off and then I let it kind of roll through. Can you run an air fryer on an eco? Probably a small one. I don't know. Heat is is. It cons it's consuming. It's high consuming, no matter what kind of heat you use. Maybe. That's why you got them watt meters, right? I'm going to tell y'all, hey, Oglamoni. Um, I don't really like solar lights and stuff with solar built into them. I'm not a big fan of that. I don't know why, but I'm very, I'm very picky. Like, I have a, a through night... TC12, which is a flashlight that gets up to about, I think it's 1100 lumens. Um, the thing that I like about that flashlight is it lasts on its firefly mode or its lowest mode. It's not a lot of light, but it lasts for 49 days. I can't find a flashlight that compares to that. Um, the solar stuff, I, I don't, I, I'm just not, I'm not a fan. I'm not a fan of those dips with the solar panels built in and all that jazz. But, you know, that's neither here nor there, I suppose. Yeah, small desk lamps are good. I brought two strings of fairy lights. Only use one watt and give off pretty good light. I've never heard of that fairy lights. Interesting. Someone else just mentioned the Luchi. Luchi lights. Can someone describe that to me just real quick? Nothing major. I can look it up later once I'm watching the replay. Um, get a few of the warm white five watt LED bulbs. They're perfect. 
try the on-site brand long cord with an on-off switch. Are those the lights that hang from the wire? Are they actual light bulbs? Anthony says it takes it just takes about 10 minutes to come to pressure, then shuts off and the pressure cooks the food. It doesn't continue to use the wattage. Thanks for that. That's that's good to know. I need to get into that. Not for me, just for my wife. Because I don't, I don't cook. I can prepare food, but I, I can't cook nothing. In New Orleans and can't cook. How sad is that? I can't swim either. You're learning a lot about me today, aren't you? <laughs> Joe Tyson, um, I try to keep my Jackery between 80% and 20%. It extends the life of the battery. I don't, don't quote me on this. I don't know, but I, I do, I have heard and I have observed that typically once a device gets above 80%, the slowing process chart slows. The charging process slows. I said that backwards. Um, it's not putting as much power into it. So in theory, it's almost not worth, especially somebody with multiple portable power stations, it's not worth keeping it on the panel once you get to 80%. If you got another power station that's at 40, it's like you might as well charge that one up. I mean, that's easier said than done because not everything uses the same connection. But with my little... Uh, <laughs> four-way dip <laughs> i'll put a link in the description an affiliate link because i got my affiliate game up uh in the description of this video after we're done but if you got the versatile dip then yeah i can unplug my uh eco flow and then plug my eb70 in and when i'm done with that i could plug my agua in and when i'm done with that i could plug my go labs in it's just like this cable is clutch the price is double at the moment it seems last time i checked so you, you know you know Use wisdom. Bring your solar yard lights inside in case of a power outage. Yeah, Leah was talking about that. That's smart. If you have them, sure. I have tons of flashlights, though, of various sizes. I don't buy flashlights that are rechargeable, that don't have batteries I can take out. I, I've, I'm, I'm over that. The batteries need to be rechargeable, and I need to be able to replace them, or I'm not buying the flashlight. With exceptions, I guess, here and there. I'm a cyclist. Oh, nice. Good for you. I bicycle tour. The Lucci works great in a tent. That name is starting to sound familiar. Jamal, have you tried building any battery packs yourself? I am not savvy in that regard, and I don't think I've ever used a soldering iron in my life. I don't think I've ever used a hot glue gun in my life. That is not my thing. I'm in IT and I've never built a computer. I tell people uh, I'm a techie. I'm not a nerd. So and it's a little derogatory towards them. <laughs> it's just a little bit, but it's playful. Phoenix flashlight. Yeah, Phoenix is a good brand. The warm white lot that use USB. Oh, OK, they're just as good as a normal bulb. I'm I'm with you because then there's no loss from AC to the bulb. So I, I, I get that. But. I have a couple of USB lights in my thing. I think the thing that's throwing me off about those USB to light bulbs is how long does that light bulb last and can you unscrew it and put another light bulb in? And then the little hooks, I don't have a place really in my house that I will put a hook in my ceiling to make it kind of useful. So, but I got them in my wish list. Actual bulbs, nice. Can you write your Venmo again. Um, I just got it like yesterday. It should be Ask I've Solar on both Cash App and um, Venmo. Forty nine days, right? My kids uh, during various times in their growing, I've used it as a nightlight for them. Um, the the lowest setting is not as useful. But if you just need to be able to see something and you don't want to stumble on something or you're going through your basement, you're trying to play it low key for all the preparedness people in there or all the preppers, um, it puts off enough light. And it's like 49 days. That's crazy. I haven't tested it, though, but I believe them. I don't know why I do, because no other flashlight comes close to that. Most of them are like, um, you know, 30 days or they measure it in hours or something like that. But no, the through night. TC, 
12 or the TN12. They use 18650 batteries. Um, the TC12 is the rechargeable one. The TN12 is the non-rechargeable one. Um, but yeah, those things, they are a beast. Okay, I will look at Amazon. Actual bulbs, good to, good to know. Good to know, Ben, everything. You use four 12-volt fans in the room helps four 12-volt fans? Man, that seems like a lot of power. DIY with batteries. Good channel. Niche channel. Well, good channel. I'm, you know, I'm trying to get you to expand that a little bit. <laughs> I just want you to be successful, brother. 49 days flashlight. This is like connecting a small 3 volt 20 amp LED to a power wall, bro. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> Those things are bright and only seven watts. Which things? Eddie T, the, the Luchis? It looks like a pool toy. You blow. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's not, That's why it sounds familiar. You blow it up and it increases the light, like putting a flashlight behind a jug of water. That sounds familiar. It really does. I used to watch um, solar gadgets. Um, and I was on this search for things that you could run off of solar that were cool. But it will always be these light like, power banks with the panels in it or the lights with the panels in it. And it's like that stuff feels gimmicky to me. So the power banks with the panels in it, people have done tests on those and they're largely... I, won't, I don't want to say useless, but it's counterproductive. You know, you can't put that thing out in the sun for real because the battery chemistry inside doesn't like the heat. So it's like, anyway. Joe Tyson says, I'm the same way. Replaceable batteries whenever possible. <laughs> would you ever buy a 50 watt panel again i'm looking for something portable 100 watt doesn't seem too portable well what are you looking for it for christian because these renergy panels are pretty they're pretty small i was just talking about um the 50 watt sun power panel which is a flexible panel and by flexible i mean not rigid i don't think you can bend it and all that jazz but those sun power panels are expensive they're well actually i saw it on amazon just now for 85 dollars for a 50 watt panel you could get a 100 watt kind of not so portable panel for 80 dollars but the 50 watt rigid panels cost like 70. so if you're actually interested in a 50 watt panel you may want to look at the sun power panel because it's really portable. It's 50 watts. It's small. It's thin. I, I think that's a that's a good deal. Byron is saying you get good deals on old solar generators. You have to do the math on. Um, that's what I did when I got my Rock Pals. I did the math because it was refurbished. So I say worst case scenario at 159. What's my cost per watt if I only get 80% of capacity out of this device? And the math still worked out for me. So you have to make sure that if that person, maybe they cycled it every day for, you know, 18 months and you're only getting 80%, you got to do the math there before you buy something used. Van says it's a great idea to buy used nickel metal hydride. I think that's what that stands for. And 1860, 18650 battery chargers too. Yes. I don't charge my batteries um, in the flashlight. I'm not against it. I just, I don't know if it works or not. And I'm just like, I bought the flashlight from Through Night, and then I also bought Through Night's 18650 charger and it came with a battery and it charged it faster. So I always just use that. And then Through Night also had like a little power bank style thing that you can twist the back off and put the 18650 battery in twist it back in it has a usb port for powering cell phones and small devices and it has a micro usb port in for charging the battery so i never use my flashlight to charge those batteries because i know one of those things charges it faster than the other um i also just recently was looking at 18650 battery chargers that had usb c i'm try i try my hardest not to buy any device that still has micro usb 
because that's just in the past and I, I'm, I don't like going backwards. You can hang Lucci or set it up on the surface, just flip it over. I'm going to look into that. And when I watch the replay, I'll, I'll definitely look into these suggestions that you guys are making. I haven't used the iron much myself. I do like the idea of adding cheaper batteries. Oh, you haven't used a, sol a soldering iron. iron. Eddie T, what bulbs? Oh, the, the Lucci? The bulbs last 30 years? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> oh, it's Lucy. Thank you, DeGraff, for helping me out there. You did it so humbly, too. <laughs> you weren't like, ah, it's Lucy, bro. Get a life. Lucy lights were given away by the power company when they shut the power. Oh, somebody asked, what's humidity? That's just OK. <laughs> oh, I see. You put the cool face. You don't have humidity where you live. I got gotcha. you. They sell 12 volt fans on offer up at times. Brand new cases. The name of the flashlight is the through night. T-H-R-U-N-I-T-E, and it's the TC-12, that's the rechargeable one, and the TN-12 is the non-rechargeable one. They have two variants. They have the cool white, which is like the blue, and then they have the natural light, which is more akin to what old flashlights used to be that had the incandescent bulbs. So it's more like an orange light. Um, cool white, blue, Natural white or NW is the more like the mag light, the old flashlights you used to have that are kind of brown or orange. Through night, TC12 and TN12. I almost bought the TN12 because I'm pretty much, I, my kids lost one of my flashlights and my wife being the um, spare no expense kind of person that she is in some of my small things. She was like, babe, just buy another one. And I was like, man, I don't want to buy another one. That flashlight was $60. And I just came around to the idea of buying another one. So I bought it. I was going to buy the TN12 because I didn't use the rechargeable port. I had batteries already. Um, I had at least one extra battery or two extra batteries. And so I, I didn't need to re the recharge function. And the non-rechargeable one was $20 cheaper. When I went to buy the TC12, which is the TN12, the TC12 was on sale for 40 bucks. So I just got the rechargeable one again. So, yeah. Win win. Janae, I'm talking about the Through Night TC12. It's a flashlight that I love. I think it goes up to 1100 watts. But the main thing that I like about it is um, well, let me just talk about it. It has a tail click switch. For turning it off and on and then it also has a mode button for changing the modes a lot of times sometimes you have to depress the tail switch to change the modes i don't like those um and it has what's called a firefly or a moonlight mode which is a very not bright version of the light and it lasts for 49 days it doesn't put out a lot of light it's something akin to having moonlight coming into your room or a firefly type of thing um, but I like that the, the, the preparedness person in me is like a flashlight that lasts for over a month. I'm into that and I can't find anything that matches that output, which is why when I wanted to buy a replacement, I started doing my research to see if I could find another one that was maybe maybe they got better. But no, nobody's messing with the through night on the, um, the moonlight mode. Very it's not a lot of light, but. If you needed to move around and find your keys without waking up your spouse or look for something in the garage without drawing attention to yourself or whatever, 49 days. Do I use my phone for videos and is it on a stand? I have a Microsoft Life Cam USB camera. I wonder if you could see it in the reflection. I got to where is it right there yeah it's like a little and it's on a stand it's on a light stand um for my little light kit because i was a youtuber before i was a youtuber on here i have a um a family channel um you know not as many subs because nobody cares about your family <laughs> okay 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 Oh, I could type it here too. 
through night. PC or TN12. And they have other flashlights. They have a um a a thirty dollar flashlight. It's called the Through Night Archer. But it's they're both a little long in tooth, I guess, in terms of being old. The V two, I believe. They have one that takes double A batteries and a fourteen. 500 or 14900 or something like that. I own one of those too. My son dropped it down one of our uh, drainage things. I let my kids play with my stuff. I shouldn't have let them play with it outside though. That hurt. Hey, Love Notes. What's happening? Good to see you. We just been in here talking about panels for the first part of the stream. Like everything from the voltage to the amps to series and parallel, the different types of panels that I own. And now we're just kind of kicking it, talking about devices we like to use and so on and so forth. Yes, the Thrunite TC12 and the TN12 are waterproof. And in the box, they give you like replacement um, rings for uh, sealing them up again. The port has a flap over it, so it's kind of sealed too. My son has played with them in the tub um, and all that jazz. I like Lucid better compared to what? The graph? Who are you talking to? Eddie T says the LED MR16 bulbs are only seven watts, super bright, and last 30 years. They throw light 100 yards. That's interesting. I'll have to certainly look for that comment when I watch the replay. Um, who's band? Everybody check out the Ratty RF radio. It comes with three light bulbs on long cords and a solar panel on a long cord. That sounds familiar. That's like a little kit you can buy that has solar panels and light bulbs. It kind of looks like a, a old small version of the device that Will Smith had in the pursuit of happiness. It's not very appealing visually, but you have light. Forty-nine days with one charge. The light is very low, but forty-nine days. <laughs> I'm actually gonna test it. It'll definitely last you, man. I don't know. I'm gonna have to test it. Now that I have two, maybe I'll test it. It's been really extra these past two weeks that Ulysses. Okay, the old Gold Zero that uses old battery system is good. All you have to do is replace the battery. They start reselling the four hundred with the battery. Uh, Gold Zero is expensive, man. Uh, Gold Zero is not even on my radar. Anybody who costs that much more than a competition, they can keep it. Uh, DIY with batteries says, if you know what's interesting about that, he says, if I, if I would be there, I'm going to make a special flashlight for you, bro. I'm a professional on flashlights. I dig that. I, I, I've seen your work, man. I've seen your work for sure. He DIYs with batteries. My Phoenix is still running off of a charge I gave it before Hurricane Sandy. That is a fact. I actually just charged my, I pulled my 18650s out of my flashlight. I also have a um, a Nikron that takes 18650 batteries because I had an extra battery laying around. So I wanted to get something else. And I like that one. It has like flood and zoom. It's a good quality flashlight. And it costs about $15. So it does, it's not special or anything. It just turns on and off. It doesn't have various modes or anything. But I, I like having another flashlight um, that uses my 18650 battery because I had one in the drawer. Yeah, your laptops typically, I mean, these new these newer laptops don't, the Ultrabooks and stuff, they have those pouch cells. Um, no wonder I couldn't find it. I spelled it wrong. Yeah, it's easy to spell that flashlight wrong. You, you know, you just, you spelled it right. They spelled it wrong. How about that 2%? What do you think of the Go Power emergency flashlight? Um, I don't I don't know much about it. I think Led talks about those things. He catches them at Walmart on sale and stuff. I mean, you know, I'm picky. You know, I I got a sixty dollar flashlight. I'm not like some people. There are flashlights that are extremely expensive. Um, not extremely, but more than sixty bucks. What I do is I look at the cheapest. I look at the most expensive, and I try to find something in the middle. There are eighty, ninety dollar flashlights from Olight. There are, you know, $100 flashlights. There are big, huge flashlights that can throw light. 
it gets real. I learned about these. I didn't even know what an 18650 battery was until I started watching this channel called Living Survival um, and Preparedness, Prepared Mind 101. Um, they were doing a lot of flashlight reviews during the season when I was in a flashlight. That's how I learned about the through night. So I don't know. I don't have an opinion on the Go Power emergency flashlight. I will tell you this. Um, I walk past flashlights in Walmart like uh, these are for the peasants. <laughs> I still look, though, but it's just like I would never buy one of those flashlights again. Um, but I'm a techie. You know what I mean? It's like I'm not going to go to the store and get like a Coast or a Maglite or a Duracell. Um, you know, that's just that's not that's not my hustle. I've had Maglites and all that. I've loved flashlights all my life. Winston says 87 people watching, 58. Uh, 58 of you need to click the like. I, you know, I I appreciate it. But let me tell you something about that like. The like button, if it didn't track the videos that you like, I'd be all for clicking like. But you have a playlist, you have a thing associated with an account that says like videos, and I'm weird about that kind of stuff. So, you know, click the like if you like the video. If you're not into it, don't click the like. But I appreciate you, Winston. Thank you for that. I don't know why they hid that. I guess because you used it. I don't know. <laughs> Glad, yeah, it's not cheap. <laughs> Glad they got coupons on that flashlight. <laughs> Lucy, Lucy, Lucci. It's all good. Lucci. Lucci is a cool word. Do you have USB lights? What do you mean? I think we were talking about something where you plug it into the USB and it has like a light bulb on the end. Van, everything was telling me about that. Um, I have... Uh, every now and then I look into the USB bulbs because i think that's cool because i have so many power banks if i could find something that was cool a cool usb bulb i would kind of get into that and just put it into my power bank maybe for the, like the kids at night or something like that because those power banks that five volts it lasts on those things forever i can run my wise camera for days on a twenty thousand milliamp hour power bank which is the ones that are about this big days It'll run at least three days. Never unplugging it. Some Miss Congeniality. Thank you. Greetings. Thank you for saying hello. I have a snap-on flashlight that costs two hundred fifty dollars, and they don't last that long. A snap-on to what? That wow, two hundred fifty dollars. That's that's real. <laughs> Tupac says I'm a peasant. <laughs> Uh, just because very timely info, you're welcome. Uh, have a good night, man. Oh, okay, it's a light bar that lights up a room. Okay, $250 is a lot of coin. A lot of coin. I have the Go Power flashlight. It works. You can crank it, USB it, solar charger. I like it for the radio. The light works fine. I'm glad I have it. I'm glad you have it, too. If you're prepping, get a cheap set of 10 by 5, 10 by 50 binoculars off Amazon. If you've never used binoculars, you'll be amazed when you use them and you can keep an eye on what's going on. I dig that. I had a, um, I have a compact pair of binoculars that are not as useful. I'm getting away from this. I, in my youth, um, I like things to be sleek and svelte and compact. Um, they're these things I got from Sharper Image, uh, I still have them. They still work, but they don't. They're, they're not useful. I, I research binoculars every now and then, but then you know, it's a novelty item. Something that I would probably let my wife buy me for my birthday or Father's Day, because um, the holidays I don't care about. I just use them to get stuff that I wouldn't spend money on myself. I don't have my own opinion on flexible solar panels. Um, Will Prowse is not a fan of them. I don't own any of them because. It seems like the history of them is that they don't last long. Now, he does talk about Will Prowse, that is. He does talk about some power cells. Um, so 
but I don't like the cost. I don't need portability. So if you're trying to charge me extra for portability, I'm I'm already out. I'm out at that point. <laughs> uh what time is it geez 7 25 what time did we get on 5 30 it's been two hours i think we're gonna wrap this up soon um what are some other things that i like to run off of solar uh one thing i don't run off of solar but i like the idea that i could is i have a raspberry pi a raspberry pi is what's called it's a single board computer it's about this big and it runs off of USB C. And I have, uh, it runs something, it runs the operating system called Linux. I use their operating system, but it uses about five watts. The reason why I like that is because I use something called Plex. Plex is a media server for those of you who don't know. I have our home movie collection that I digitize. So it has all of our favorite movies from my adulthood. We haven't added many kids movies yet. We need to. Um, so I love the fact that if the power goes down, my internet or wireless will work because those are two separate things. Um, anyway, <laughs> um, and I could power my Raspberry Pi from there and we could watch our movie collection locally on our network if we needed to, even if the internet wasn't working. I, I think that that's dope. Uh, can you talk about charging your go labs on solar as a 60 watt max what happens if more watts are applied so i know kashelda says she uses her go labs actually i do too but i don't do it often um you you so i talked about it earlier but most power stations have a hard amp limit and i think that go labs is at three or three and some change or something um, so it just it'll allow as many volts as a panel produces, which is typically about 16, maybe 17 um, on a 100 watt panel. And it just gives you that times the three amps. So, you know, 17 times 3, 10, 10, 10, 37, 14, 44 plus another seven, you know, 50. What is that? 51. Yeah, that's about how much it charges at. So. Thank you, MJ. I appreciate that. So what was, Stuart, what was your, uh, in my mind, your name was Stuart Scott. I've never put together that it was two Stuarts. <laughs> it was Stuart something else. That shows you how observant I am. Do you have a concern or a curiosity about the, um, the Golabs and solar and 60 watts? You, it's like, I think I answered that. Um, it gets about 51 watts on a sunny day from my 100 watt panel. And I've seen it get around 22, 25, maybe a little more on my 50 watt energy panel in a really sunny day. That's what's up. I use an eight terabyte hard drive to watch movies off the power of the sun. Ask God, I need to make one. I need to make one what? You cannot have too many flashlights. I have so many flashlights. I have two through nights. I have three Nikrons. I have uh, the 18650 Nikron with the rotating head. I have the double A Nikron with the rotating head that goes from uh, you know straight up to um, 90. I have just a Nikron 18650. Is that one 18650? Okay, anyway, I don't know what battery it takes. One of them takes a big battery. They're on my fridge. They're in my video um, somewhere around here. I have two, what are they called? They're little triple A flashlights by Lumentop. I have two Lumentop joints. I have one really nice pocket size flashlight that takes a, a, a very small rechargeable battery, but I can replace it. That's very important to me. Um, it charges off a USB, but you can replace that battery. Uh, I think that's about it. So I, I have about a good eight or nine flashlights floating around here. And I have one like double A Cree. It was like one that I got in my, my peasant tree days of not knowing what a good flashlight was. 
that one takes a double A battery. I'm mostly that my kids play with it. Oh, make a, I'm not, I don't know if I know enough. I feel like these videos are fine. I don't know enough to make a solo for dummies book. <laughs> Some more, you have no flashlights. Also, I have three Motorola G7 powers that I got for free from Metro PCS. And the reason why I bring those up is the battery is huge. It's like a 5,000 milliamp hour battery. Most cell phones live in about the 3,000 milliamp amp hour joints and they last for about, most cell phones last for about a day. These things last for days. And they have what's called CHOP to uh, uh, activate the flashlight. So even if I didn't have all these flashlights, I have three phones with massive batteries that this, I, this isn't one of them, but I installed the app to make this do it. That if I shook them like that, the flashlight on the back comes on. Which is dope. That's just dope. Well, the EcoFlow has one, so technically, and you, I'm sure you have a cell phone. Um, hopefully, your cell phone has a flashlight. And you know, light is light. I did. I have been wanting to look into lanterns lately because I want to fill my room with light. But I, I didn't. I found myself unenthused with the options that were on. Um, Amazon. I didn't see any lanterns that I was really into. I wanted to get 18650 lanterns because I have those batteries and I like those batteries. Did you know that those are the batteries that are in um, the Tesla? They're going to new battery selection. But when I, I heard that, I felt I felt like I felt cheap. But I mean, you know, I don't know. You know, those people are way smarter than me. But they, those big old battery packs use 18650 batteries. You have to get you a flashlight some more. A couple. Get like three. The Nikrons are really good on Amazon. They have really good reviews. Um, I'll put the links to the ones that I have in this video after I'm done. <laughs> hey, Goddess Leo. I think the live was good. I think that these lives have good replay value, but I like listening to myself talk. So um, I find me incredibly interesting. So <laughs> I enjoy watching my uh, lives back. I, I really do. Um, someone did a video showing the 18650 batteries and the Go Power Plus power company gave us Nebo flashlights, really instills faith in the power grid, <laughs> right? <laughs> Nightcore tip, yeah. The Nightcore tip is that battery re replaceable though. I had two Nightcore, um, the little keychain flashlights. Those flashlights were so good. They were so small, but I found myself. So what I did was I had one, I bought it and I used it like crazy and it stopped working like maybe 12 months later, like a little bit outside of the warranty. Actually, it may have even been within the warranty. Um, so I bought another one and I babied that thing. It stopped working in a year. And the people, I emailed the people, was like, man, what's going on? And they asked me to send them back to them. But it was going to China. It's like, man, it's a $10 flashlight. I'm, I'm not wasting my time trying to package that and send it to China and wait for y'all to send it back. I just, I didn't, I wasn't into it. Thank you, Linda. Now, every now and then I get a compliment on my voice. <laughs> How's the audio compared to my other ones? I hope the audio is a lot better. I couldn't stand the audio in my last uh, lives. I mean, it was fine. I find that everybody sounds a little gritty online if they use just the built-in stuff. And I was using a, a blue snowball. All right, it is 7.34. We've been at this for two hours. It has been a wonderful time, but I got to get back to my family. Venmo, Ask God Sola. Yeah, I, I set it up. Some people, you know, they are appreciative. I set up Cash App, Ask God Sola, and I set up Venmo, Ask God Sola. Um, so, you want to toss your boy a couple coins? I appreciate it. Anybody have any more questions about panels? Let's kind of round this thing out. I think we're, we're good. 
I wanted to do these three lives. Oh, my first live that I did, I put timestamps in that one because that one has a lot of commonly asked questions. So go back and check out my first live. Look at the timestamps. If there's any questions that you have that are covered in those timestamps, just click them and play them. I did not put timestamps in the second one, but I did this one because I kind of wanted to hit you guys back to back with, you know, just as much information to kind of satisfy that beginner curiosity. Thank you some more. I'm, I'm, I've never been one to want a flashlight to clip onto a hat, mainly because I don't wear hats. Um, but I'm finding that to be in these times, uh, uh, a useful feature. So I'm with you there. Man, blessings to all of you guys, whether y'all believe in Jesus or not. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed the replay, Casey. If you have any questions, comment them on the video. Um, and I'll do my best to answer. I'll, I'll answer to the best of my ability. So I was curious about those Santan panels and even used panels in general from the marketplace because people have home panels that they're getting rid of. Um, but none of my power stations can take can use that voltage. Now, if I should be so fortunate to have a company send me something that has that higher voltage, I am I am um, I'm intrigued by those panels because having one panel that's in the 24 volt range put out 275 watts, that just seems dope. And some of them are larger. You can get one that's 305 watts or whatever. Um, Will Solo Will is a uh, <laughs> that's what I call him in my house, even though he has many interests. He's been doing videos about those panels, but you have to have them shipped to you on a pallet, so you have to pay a lot of money to get them. Trevor asks, what is your best performing solar panel? I find that most panels perform the same if you manage your expectations. I typically try to spend less than a dollar per watt. So even if a panel doesn't put out as much power, I feel justified. Like, you know, if I can get 70 watts, 75 watts from a panel that cost me 80 bucks, I'm winning. Um, I have a video about the Renergy versus the HQST that I did, and they perform about the same. I've also kind of hinted at in some of my videos. I have a short that I'm going to put out maybe um, tomorrow or Monday or something like that, um, just showing that when my panels are in parallel, my two budget panels, HQST, cost me $160 total, and my Renergy panels, two 100 watts, cost me $200 total. They both put out about the same power when laid flat on the ground pointed at in summer sun. So it's like, I like the form factor of the Renergy panels. I wish I knew that Rich Solar sold panels that were a similar form factor to the Renergies because I would have got the Rich Solars. They're not that much cheaper though. That's the thing. Solar prices are kind of fluctuating. I expect a Rich Solar panel to be 80 bucks. So if I could have got two of them for 160, that would have been cool. But I think the kit was like 190 or something like that. So it was like, I didn't feel bad. I didn't feel bad about buying the, the Renergy ones because at the point when I was interested in getting another panel, the HQST ones were $90. So I was like, well, I might as well spend an extra $10 on the Renergy because one, it's a different form factor. Two, it's a different brand. And I, you know, I make a video or two about it. So extra 10 bucks. I believe at 2%. Hey, nice. Yeah, man. Glass panels will last you 10 years easy. They're rated to last you 25 with degrading over time. It's like, it's the best. 
that's why I kind of, you know, it's interesting because I, I may find myself at some point because I find myself now feeling like, man, I wish I would have just got the 200 watt panels, but I'm an incrementalist. Um, so spending like 80 bucks on a panel here, 80 bucks there felt better than because um, what I had my eyes on was that 200 watt panel from Bouge RV, but they only sold it in the set of two. So I would have to spend four hundred dollars and I just I wasn't into that. So, you know. Excuse me. What's the largest capacity power station you have and what do you use to charge it? My largest capacity right now is my EB70 and I use a 200 watt 12 volt rich solar um, solar panel. Yeah, that's what I was thinking, man. If you eat, Byron says, if you don't get the high price flex panels, they don't last long. I've been looking at the ones at Wally World, but wasn't sure which size to get. So I haven't taken a plunge, but I can check Amazon too. Are you talking about panels, uh, Linda? Oh, flashlights. Maybe you're talking about flashlights. Your last comment was about flashlights. What folding panels do you have? And you have you had folding panels for 10 years? How often do you use them, Byron? <laughs> yeah, they seem they seem good. I've watched uh, as many videos as I could find on those Bouge RV panels because my goal with solar was always to have like one power station and one panel. I wanted to keep it simple. That's all I've ever wanted. Life gets complex, but you know, my EB70, EB70, one panel. My EcoFlow, two panels, because that's just a lot that I have in life. But I'd like to get a 200 watt panel for that one. That would be great. Am I going to spend $200 on it? I don't think so. I don't think so. All right, y'all. I'm out. Holla. The chat's going to be active for a few more minutes. I'll stick around and chat there. But I'm about to get off this video and break this stuff down. It's been beautiful. Y'all be beautiful. I'll answer any questions I can. I'm here to help. That's what I'm all about.